get your beat. So what I like to do before I start cutting hair is I like to either brush the hair down or pick the hair out. In this case, I'm going to pick the hair out, make sure everything is stre stretched out to its maximum potential. And um, yeah, you don't want to start off, uh, you know, just diving in, cutting, because how you start is how you finish. If you start off neat, chances are the blend and the haircut itself is neat. You start off sloppy. The, the the haircut is just gonna look that way so make sure you start off neat so now that I have everything stretched out um, I'm gonna start by shaping the afro uh, I got my wall cordless seniors with the lever fully closed and I'm just running that blade over the top um, taking off just a little bit I want to keep as much length on top as possible and I'm just sculpting at this point um, one of my instructors when I was in barber school uh, gave me some um, some good advice on how to shape uh, an afro he told me basically to start from the bottom and kind of bring my way over to the top right it's better for your hand motion to go from bottom to top then from side to side or from top to bottom all right your hand goes in a circular motion easier if you swing it out you know your hand from the bottom and swing it out to the top so uh if you're kind of new at shaping and sculpting uh afros that's how you want to start off because it's going to give you a better shape Now moving on to the taper part, I'm gonna brush the hair down and I'm gonna use my Babyliss Skeleton FX to set in my bald line. I'm gonna do it in a rainbow-like shape. If you're a beginner, you don't have to use your trimmers to do this. You can use your, uh, your clipper with the lever closed and just you know make that shape that way and go up on it. This is kind of a harsh uh, way to set in your guideline, but if you're experienced, you know how to take it out. Now switching over to my wall cordless seniors with the lever open. Uh, in a flick out motion, I'm going up about a half inch, uh, making sure I keep that C or a rainbow like shape 
consistency as much as possible but you don't want to dig in you ba i'm basically kind of just scooping out flicking out so that i could easily blend into the next guideline right now switching over to the one guard open i'm doing the same exact thing scooping out with my one guard not really digging in setting another guideline um what you want to do is want to basically let everything flow into the afro So now with my lever open, I'm basically going to freehand that one into the afro uh, building shape. Um, I'm kind of giving it a flared out look instead of it being like a complete uh, Michael Jackson afro. Uh, I kind of wanted an up to date afro, so I'm basically kind of flaring it out a little bit. Now putting on that one guard with the lever open, I'm going with the grain, um, basically attacking that area between the one and the free hand, uh, the area where I freehand it, um, just to get it to run smoothly so you won't have that line uh, that separates from the uh, taper and the afro. Next, putting on the zero guard with the lever closed. In a flick out motion, flick out that middle line that you created between the lever open and the one guard open. So all I'm doing is I'm using my corners um, throughout this whole process. I'm not using both sides of the blade because you don't wanna take off too much on, in one area, right? Um, a lot of times you'll use uh, 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 both sides of the corners and not know that you're you're taking off too much on that other side. So I recommend just using your corners throughout this whole entire process. Next with the lever fully closed in a flick out motion, flick out that bottom line. Now it's different from uh, setting in a guideline from flicking out. Remember when I say flick out, it's usually like a one, two motion. It's a, it's a quick flick motion. It's not, setting in guidelines so if you need if you need to adjust your lever a little bit off of lever close uh so that you can get used to um you know the lever fully closed right now i'm just doing detail work touching up that uh shape um seeing those areas where i need to debulk um and like i said when it comes to detailing i like to take a look away from the blend uh come back and just corner work uh, areas where I see bulk. So next I'm going to work on uh, behind my client's ear. I'm going to, um, you know, basically shape it, flare it out even more so it, that it can match the sides. Uh, I kind of want to make it visible so you can see the lineup area as well. So uh, with the lever closed, I'm just going near the lineup and I'm basically building that shape, flaring it out. So what I do on the sides is the same steps that I take on the back. Now, you guys should memorize these steps. Um, it should be like second nature. I'm gonna tell you uh, all of the steps that I take. I take the ball line first, then I go with the lever open, then it's the one open, then I might freehand it into uh, the afro, then I might come down with the one guard, kind of blend that area down with the grain, then I'm gonna attack that middle line. I'm gonna take out that middle line with the zero guard closed. Then I'm gonna drop down, take off the guards and close the lever and flick out that bottom line. Now, throughout this whole process, I'm going to basically detail everything, all right? I'm gonna go in with different guards uh, where I you know, set the guidelines and just take out those guidelines with my corners.
where you get your beats. Where you get your beats. So now working on the front line, I'm going to bring that front line down to a 1.5 just to knock off some of that bulk and then reshape it so that it has that flared out look as everything else on the sides.
Where you get your beats? Where you get your beats? So next, all I'm gonna do is take my afro shears and basically detail the top. So he wants that sponge curl look on the top. So I'm gonna do is grab my sponge curl and go in small circular motions. Now, a lot of people may think that, um, especially people that, you know, the clients, they think that it's just gonna happen in within seconds. Like you gotta keep going in small circles in order to build that nappy look.
Listen, let me tell you why they call me 360. When they sit in my chair, I spin them in a the full 360, and they come out looking like... Damn, son. We make it look easy. YouTube, this is The Cut. And if you like it, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. Also, Hustle Dreams Production, that's my brother. He does all my beats. His YouTube channel will be linked in the description below. Make sure you guys go give him a follow. Also, if you want to know where you can find any tools that you've seen in this video, links will be in the description below. Otherwise, you guys can follow me on Instagram and TikTok. My TikTok is official 360GZ and my Instagram is 360GZ. But it's your boy 360GZ and I'm out of here. Cheers.